Welcome to Flow State, a podcast designed to help you focus. And I'm your host, Bobby Light, here to provide the soundtrack to your work. You're listening to the talk only version of Flow State. In this version, I've removed the music so you can re-listen to or share a specific topic I've discussed. Eventually, I may even expand on the topics with longer talk-only episodes, discussing deep work, neurology, peak performance, and of course, the science of flow. Enjoy! Today, I want to share a system for execution and long-term growth that can be applied for big goals and projects that also requires close to zero management. Here's an example of this system in my life right now. When I was in my 20s, I used to weight train in the gym five to six days a week, always to exhaustion, you know, as young men do in their 20s. Every year, without fail, I would injure myself and set myself back several months. Now, in my quote-unquote wise 30s, I weight train once a week. That's right, once. The improvements to my physique with this minimal effort is, in fact, noticeable over just a few months. But more importantly, I physically feel the best I've felt in years. And even more exciting is that I know I can keep this up, this almost no effort routine for a long time. Meaning the compound improvement over a year, two years and more, I'll probably be more healthy in my 40s than my entire life. As you can see, I'm talking about a system of small, continual 1% improvements. But how does this 1% improvement apply to big goals or projects, you ask? To be honest, I personally also dismiss this method as only useful for fitness goals, learning an instrument or language, and other side goals. I never thought I could use it for large projects, goals, let alone entire businesses. Up until last week. Last week, I wanted to gather data on how long it takes me to finish creating the core deliverables of this podcast. And so I wrote down every task and how long it took me to complete it on a spreadsheet. This process was incredibly valuable. When it came time to plan my next week, I looked at the spreadsheet and asked myself, can I curate music in less time this week? Can I write and record in less time? How can I improve each of these tasks by just a little this week? And that's when it hit me. Having broken down all of my work for Flow State into their smallest task, the entire endeavor has become a 1% better challenge. How can I incrementally improve how I curate music, write, record, edit by just a little every week? In other words, when you break down any project or goal into its smallest tasks, you turn the entire thing into a simple 1% better challenge. This system of execution and growth also requires nearly zero management. All I need to do is every week look at what I did last week and aim to do slightly better. Each week this will feel almost effortless. But over the long term, the change is massive. James Clear, the author of Atomic Habits and a big proponent of getting 1% better every day, considers the process of working backwards a key component to his approach. In his blog, he states, We often measure our progress by looking forward. We set goals, we plan milestones for our progress, Basically, we try to predict the future to some degree. There is an opposite and, I think, more useful approach. Measure backward, not forward. 
Measuring backward means you make decisions based on what has already happened, not on what you want to happen. I think James hits the nail on the head here. For me, planning into the future has almost always failed. I set a milestone and next week things have changed to a point where the milestone is no longer relevant. By measuring backwards, I simply improve upon yesterday. Over time, I will have surpassed any goal or milestone I could have set. To show that we can apply this 1% better methodology to big endeavors, James Clear shares the incredible turnaround success story of the British cycling team. By 2003, British cycling had endured mediocrity for nearly 100 years, only winning a single gold medal in the Olympics. It got so bad that top bike manufacturers didn't want to sell their product to the team in fear of it hurting their reputation. Finally, Dave Brailsford was hired as the new performance director in hopes of changing their fortune. What made Brailsford different from previous coaches was his relentless commitment to searching for a tiny margin of improvement in everything you do. He called this the aggregation of marginal gains. If you broke down everything you could think of that goes into riding a bike and then approve it by 1%, you will get a significant increase when you put them all together, Brailsford stated. So his team went about doing this by looking at every detail that went into cycling. From comfortable seats, to using alcohol on tires to improve grip, to asking riders to wear electrically heated shorts to maintain loose muscles. They looked at everything, but they didn't stop at the typical. They started to look into overlooked unexpected areas for 1% improvements. They even hired a surgeon to teach each rider the best way to wash their hands to reduce the chances of catching a cold. They helped their riders with the best pillows and mattresses that led to a good night of sleep. With hundreds of these tiny improvements accumulated, the results started to show. Five years after Brailsford took over, they won an incredible 60% of the gold medals available in the 2008 Olympics. Four years later, the team set nine Olympic records and seven world records in the London Olympic Games. Following that, the team would win five Tour de France victories in six years. And then during the 10-year span from 2007 to 2017, British cyclists won 178 world championships and 66 Olympic and Paralympic gold medals, captured five Tour de France victories in what is widely regarded as the most successful run in cycling history. Wow, just reading about this is blowing my mind. And yet I see that most of the world is lost in the idea that massive success requires massive action. In reality, it's the small, incremental, and almost unnoticeable regular improvements that lead to massive change. I'm also really excited about this because now I have a system that seems to work with, not against, my flow state. Last week, I talked about the importance of letting go of the outcome and simply being present with the work with the art. This act of being in flow gives us the best chance for success. But if we're constantly working in a system that continuously pulls us out of our flow, asking us to create milestones and essentially predict the future, then we will continue to find ourselves worried about the outcome, losing our state of flow. But with this system, a system that asks us to simply improve upon yesterday, we have a system that actually works with and supports our flow state. Thanks for listening today. I hope you got a lot done. 
And I hope you find value in this system of improvement that can lead to massive long-term growth and a system that supports your flow state. Until next time, keep on flowing.